Oh crap. Go for me and you start. Oh my god. Five, seven, six, go. five, three, two, so cool. one. Booster ignition and lift off of Shuttle Discovery. Kambate Kudasai. That's the walk to the International Space Station's newest laboratory. Yay! Houston and Discovery, roll Discovery. Houston now controlling the flight of Discovery, a man-made rising sun on behalf of Japan. Cool. Discovery on the proper alignment, head down, wings level for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware oh and humans taking aim on the International Space Station. Should be careful. Hey now. 36 seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back to 72% of rated performance, going in the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes supersonic. Mm -hmm. cool. Discovery already five miles in altitude, eight and a half miles downrange, traveling almost a thousand miles an hour. Wow. That's fast. Discovery Houston, go and throttle up. Some Throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Mark Kelly, joined on the flight deck by pilot Ken Ham, flight engineer Ron Garan, and mission specialist Karen Nyberg. Down on the mid deck are Mike Fossum, Aki Hoshide, and Greg Shamatov, heading for a half year on the International Space Station. Oh. One minute, 45 seconds into the flight. Discovery 22 miles in altitude, 23 miles downrange. Standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Yeah, those rockets going to come off. Oh, there they go. Right. Booster officer confirms staging, a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. The onboard computer steering the shuttle for the on-ramp to the highway for the International Space Station. Discovery 37 miles in altitude, 50 miles downrange, traveling 3,200 miles an hour. Maneuvering system engines have ignited, providing Discovery with a burst of power for the next two minutes, 15 seconds. Roger, two engine morale. That call from Mark Kelly, the first of a series of performance calls in the event of the loss of a main engine. However, all three main engines continue to perform normally, along with the auxiliary power units and the three power producing fuel cells. Discovery flying on the singular power of its three liquid fuel main engines, draining a half a ton of fuel per second from the large fuel tank. Discovery 52 miles in altitude, 100 miles downrange, three and a half minutes into the flight. We're coming up on the point of negative return, where the shuttle would be too far downrange, too high in altitude to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. All three main engines continue to function normally, however. Three minutes, 47 seconds into the flight. Discovery flying straight and true, speeding toward a date with the International Space Station on Monday. Discovery, Houston, negative return. Yay! <laughs> Roger, negative return. All of Discovery systems in great shape. Four minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, Discovery 62 miles in altitude, picking up speed, 170 miles downrange, traveling 5,300 miles an hour. The environmental systems officer reports the activation of the flash evaporator system, providing cooling for Discovery's avionics and other systems until the time that the payload bay doors are open an hour and a half into the flight. Four minutes, 40 seconds into the mission. All the main engines, right down the money, in good shape, good performance, good auxiliary power units, good fuel cells. 
Discovery traveling 6,000 miles an hour, 66 miles in altitude, 230 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Five minutes into the flight, three and a half minutes of powered flight remaining. Very quiet here in the flight control room. Discovery Houston, press the ATO, select Estrus. Roger, press the ATO, we'll select Estrus. That call acknowledged by uh, Commander Mark Kelly, indicating that uh, in the event of a loss of a main engine, we could still make our abort to orbit targets. However, all three main engines continue to function normally. Okay. 